All right, guys, good morning or whatever time you're watching this. So I, I want to, the way I want to review for this EOC, um, so I've got this practice EOC that you guys can take over and over. It's going to show you the right answers. Um, it's on Schoology. So, you know, feel free to go ahead. It'll definitely help you out a bit, I think. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over, I'm going to try and get through all the questions. There's a lot of them, um, but I'll get through as much as I can before I got a couple appointments coming up. And so um, I, I'm just going to jump right into each question and kind of just briefly explain the thought process behind finding the answer and then go to the next one. So I'm going to try, try and do it kind of quick. So um, so some things you could do, you just watch this video and pause it and you know try and figure out the answer and then you know, hit play, and then you'll kind of listen to the thought process as I go through it. Or you could take the test first and then go watch this video. What, whatever you want, whatever works for you is fine. Now, keep in mind, as far as your EOC goes, um, the questions uh, tend to be a lot longer. They tend to have a lot more text in them, and not only the questions, but also the answers. So really, they're still the same type of questions you're going to see here in this practice exam. It's just a little bit more text. So, uh, you know, part of this exam is just kind of picking out the keywords. So first you pick out the question, uh, which tend to be kind of hidden in all the text. And then you got to look at the answers. And generally there's going to be two answers that you're going to be deciding between two. And there's just like a keyword in there that'll help you. All right. So as far as your EOC goes, um, it, you got, I forget the exact number of questions. It's like 65 or something. There is a few questions in there uh, of content that you haven't been over, but you won't, those aren't graded. So for example, if you're asked about the function of the frontal lobe or something like that, it's not a graded question. So just kind of keep that in mind. There's only a few of them that might be in there and you know, just something to consider. Okay, the other thing, when you're when you get a question on your EOC, first thing you do, look for the question. You might have a paragraph or two paragraphs of text. Look for the question. You might not even need to read everything, um, but definitely look for the question first. So, all right. So let's go ahead and start with this first one. So here's an example. It is a lot of text here. There's a lot of words. So that's the other thing. You're going to see words that you never learned in biology so this is a good example of those there's a couple things in here you, you know a lot of times students see those and be like oh my gosh I never learned that I don't know what the answer is it doesn't matter okay um you're just kind of picking out the keyword so we'll start here generally the question is going to be the last sentence so um we're just going to jump to the end of this question here and it basically says so eukaryotes and not prokaryotes because the cells have blah 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 so basically, this is just a roundabout way of asking, why is something a eukaryote and not a prokaryote? That's it. That's all it is. But all this other stuff here is just fluff. So you might see stuff like that. And, you know, you might get a question like this. You don't know the answer. It might help you in the text a, a little bit. But anyways, let's jump right in it because, all right, so how do you know something is eukaryote and not a prokaryote? So easiest thing to remember, prokaryote, think pro no, because prokaryotes have no nucleus. They are simple. They are bacteria. Okay. They're, they're just basic, basic cells. Okay. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, do have a nucleus. Okay. So I just gave the answer here. They do have a nucleus. Eukaryotes have a nucleus. Prokaryotes do not. Um, some eukaryotes have cell walls. Um, all cells have hereditary material, that's just DNA. And then some, you know, all cells can have a flagella that's just used for movement. All right, next question. All right, food web. So which organism receives the most amount of energy from the producer? So producers are gonna be your grass, your plants, phytoplankton, whatever the case is, the most amount of energy is gonna be the one connected to it. So this could be grasshopper, rabbit, or mouse. So the only one on there out of those three would be grasshopper. And then if this said the least amount of energy, it would be the hawk. Okay, and that's because the 10% rule. 10% of the energy from each trophic level goes to the next. So the grasshopper, the rabbit, the mouse, they get 10% of the energy from the grass. And then the lizard gets 10% of that, and that 10%. So higher up, 
there's less energy available. <clears throat> all right, all right, next question. So which statement is correct? Okay, so you can pretty much treat this as a true and false. Okay, so it, it's asking gametes. You're seeing gametes a lot. So gametes are, they're just sex cells, sperm and egg. That's all it is. So A, you can automatically get rid of. It says they're not sex cells, so it's not A. Gametes are produced by mitosis. Mitosis is for body cells or somatic cells. Um, meiosis is for gametes or sex cells. Uh, gametes are involved in transporting DNA. Okay. Um, so sex cells, the whole point of sex cells or gametes is to, you know, mix up DNA, transport it into a, you know, sperm and egg combine. So ultimately we're transporting DNA is one of the functions of gametes. All right, moving on, um, waxy coating organic molecule. So again, you're just kind of looking for the keywords. So we're talking about macromolecules or biomolecules. So those are, you know, your carbs, your lipids, nucleic acids, proteins. Those are the first ones we talked about. Waxy coating. So fats, oils, waxes. Okay. All of those are the same. All of those are lipids. Okay. Nucleic acid, that's DNA. That's a nucleic acid. Carbohydrates. Okay. Um, this is going to be like your starches and stuff used for energy, protein, protein, anything for building muscle includes enzymes, those kind of things. So each of these macromolecules, um, you could ask various questions about the functions, examples, what they're made of, what they look like. Uh, there should be some other questions as we go ahead. All right, properties of water. All right, for some reason, if I remember right, not last year, year before, because there wasn't a bio EOC last year, a, a lot of students had trouble with properties of water. And, you know, I'm not sure why. I think they're kind of overthinking it maybe. So um, properties of water, reason for not fluctuating in temperature. Keyword is temperature, okay? There's only two things that really have to do with temperature. One would be expansion upon freezing, which is not even an option, and then high heat capacity, okay? High heat capacity, um, you know, it, it's basically takes a lot of energy to change the temperature of water. So it resists temperature change or anything dealing with regulating temperature is going to be that. All right, um, versatile solvent. This has to do with dissolving uh, or absorbing. Um, buffer isn't really, buffer has to do with pH. It's not going to be on there. Acids have to do with the pH. It's not going to, it's not a property of water that you need to worry about. You will be asked about acids and bases, but as far as it goes, don't worry about it. All right, moving on. All right, again, just jump to the end. According to the theory, which of the following events would need to occur for life to first evolve? So, um, the very so for living things to develop. So, early Earth, first living things, first life. Which one of these would need to occur first? So, all of these are important. But one of these basically includes all of the others. All right, so let's just start at the top. Photosynthesis, it, it's an organelle, okay? It's, you know, organelles, structures inside cells. All right, that's, that's kind of a complicated structure. Origin of genetic material, very important, DNA. That being said, DNA is made up of smaller molecules. Um, synthesis, and by the way, synthesis just means the production of organic molecules. This is, you know, carbs, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, okay? Um, that sounds pretty good. And then plasma membrane, cell membrane is made up of, you know, lipids, phospholipids, all that stuff. So C is gonna be your answer. Organic molecules make up all of the other things. All right, how do white blood cells respond to chemicals on the surface of an invading organism? All right. So by synthesizing or by making antibodies that mark these organisms for destruction. Sounds pretty good. Um, by releasing hormones that break down organisms. No, hormones, um, don't really worry about that. By secreting antibiotics, antibiotics are man-made, so it's definitely not C. By altering the DNA sequence. If you alter the DNA sequence, that's a mutation, so it's not that. All right, so it's definitely going to be A. All right. Um, 
Okay, a sex link trait. So back to the genetic sex link trait. Um, so there's what we call autosomal traits, which are, you know, your typical ones you learned about with the Punnett square, dominant recessive trait, widow's peak, all that, blah, blah, blah. You know, anybody can have them. Okay, and then sex link traits. So are uh, specifically on the sex chromosomes, which would be the X and the Y chromosome. So, or X or Y chromosome. So it's gonna be this. Okay, all of the other chromosomes are, are what we call autosomes. Okay, and those are the you know, ones we typically topic up, talk about. So this is gonna be like color blindness and hemophilia. Those are the two big ones talked about with uh, sex link traits. All right, we're talking about um, cellular transportation here. Um, how do the molecules get into the cell? It's not really enough, so we'll go back a little bit more. Uh, moving across the cell membrane against the gradient. That's kind of the key words there, against the gradient. So think of that as like against the natural flow. So that's going to require energy. All right. So passive does not require energy. So neither of those can be the answer. Um, so that leaves active transportation using the ATP or phagocytosis. So it's definitely going to be, like I said, ATP is energy and active transportation, you know, that's just, that's it. And then real quick, osmosis is the movement of water. Uh, and then passive transportation by diffusion. Diffusion is just, you know, more generalized term for that. Osmosis is specifically water. So transportation without energy. All right, occurs during meiosis, but not mitosis. So meiosis has to do pretty much anything dealing with reproduction. Mitosis is normal growth and repair. So which one of these would have to do with reproduction? Chromosomal replication, okay? Synapse of chromosomes, we never really talked about that. Uh, spindle formation and then cleavage furrow. So the one that has to do with um, reproduction is gonna be chromosomal replication. All right. All right. Number 11. So what unique property contributes to this effect? So the effect would be blah, 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 ice. All right. Really simple ice. So this is expansion upon freezing. When water, the reason water does this is because it becomes less dense. Water freezes, it expands, it becomes less dense. Um, and that's it. All right, so property of water, again, enabling the water to move from the roots to the leaves of the plant. So it has to move up. So that upward movement, um, and there, there could be a couple answers for this if you have this type of question. Um, so it's the technical term is called capillary action. So capillary action is that movement upward through a narrow tube. And the reason this occurs is because of specifically cohesion, also adhesion, they kind of work together. So it sticks to the side, sticks to itself, works its way up. So because of the cohesive behavior. All right, first types of living organisms. So very, very primitive. First decide aerobic or anaerobic. So aerobic needs oxygen. Anaerobic does not need oxygen. Early earth, there was very little oxygen. So it has to be one of the anaerobic ones. And then which one's more primitive, a prokaryote or a eukaryote? Okay, and remember pro no, because they have no nucleus and they're just very basic in general. So it's gonna be anaerobic prokaryote. All right, which one of these supports the cell theory? So basically which one of these are true? That's it, keep it simple. Um, new cells are produced by division of existing cells. That sounds pretty good. All cells are composed of more than one cells. That's not right. It's one or more cells. So that's what I mean. You might read through it quickly and think, oh yeah, that's part of the cell theory. Cells must contain a nucleus and then not all cells are alive. So all cells are alive 
And then prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, so it's definitely going to be A. All right, which processes are involved in the cycling of carbon? So really, we're talking about carbon dioxide most of the time. All right, so photosynthesis, plants take in carbon dioxide. And then respiration, respiration giving off carbon dioxide. We can pretty much stop right there. That's it, that's the answer. Um, real quick, evaporation and condensation are dealing with water. Transcription, translation, that's, that's DNA and RNA. And then diffusion and transpiration. Um, diffusion is type of transportation, uh, materials, water. Transpiration is just water evaporating from plants. All right, these are the stages of mitosis. You need to put them in the correct order. So the order is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So prophase, um, prophase could look like two different things. So um, this is prophase. Um, prophase could also, so this prophase is showing the nucleus still there. There's also what we call late prophase, which would not have the nucleus there and just the, the chromosomes could just be around. Okay, after prophase is metaphase. Metaphase, think middle, they're lined up in the middle right here. Okay, after metaphase is anaphase. Anaphase, think apart. Okay, they get pulled apart. And then telophase is right before the cell splits in half through cytokinesis. All right, removal, which would cause an immediate decrease of energy. Okay, so where's most of the energy? Most of the energy is in the plants or the producers right here. Okay, that's a, that should be A, yep. All right, in order for the closure to be joined in the world of three. Okay, so you don't have to support the hypothesis, you know, it's just an educated guess. That doesn't mean it's generally accepted or not. Um, it definitely has to be repeated over and over. That's, that's gonna be the answer. You, you shouldn't have several variables. It does not have to be conduct, conducted by a scientist. All right, largest to smallest. Um, there's several sayings to help you remember this, but it's just domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So domain is not on there. Kingdom, uh, and these might not be in order, order. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So there you go. All right, the best describes an immune response. So in your immune system recognizes and destruction of pathogens. Pathogen is just a fancy word for like a germ, you know, bacteria, viruses, fungus, that kind of thing. So that's the answer. Um, reproduction doesn't have to do with the immune system. Red blood cells don't destroy parasites. White blood cells can. Um, again, antibiotics are man-made. All right, um, what statement by the solution in the two place only? All right, we're gonna have to go back. All right, so this is talking about BTB solution. So BTB um, is a solution that turns yellow. So it's a blue solution. When you have CO2 added to it, it turns yellow. So if you take a straw and you have a cup with this blue BTB solution, you blow into it, it's gonna turn yellow because of the CO2, All right? Now plants, obviously, they absorb CO2 for photosynthesis. So if you have an aquatic plant, you put it in that cup that is now full of your CO2, that plant's gonna absorb the CO2 and it's gonna turn back to blue. Okay, really simple. So carbon dioxide was produced for respiration. So oxygen, so it has to do with carbon dioxide. BTB changes with carbon dioxide. So it's either A or D. Okay, so it's going to be D. All right, cross-sectional leaf. What is structure X? Structure X is pointing to the hole in the leaf. The hole in the leaf, those are called guard cells. And I'm sorry, the, the hole is called the stomata or stoma. And then um, next to it is the guard cells that open and close the stomata. And the whole point of this is for gas exchange. Okay, takes in carbon dioxide, give off oxygen, um, and then also water escapes through what we call transpiration. 
All right, which of the following most likely have similar DNA base sequences? So basically, if they're on the same fork, I call it a fork. So like A and B are on the same fork, C and D, E and F, those ones are the most closely related. So it's like E and G. Okay, not the same exact fork, but not too far apart. C and D, all right, there you go. There's your answer, they're the same one. All right, dichotomous key. Now, I honestly don't know if you had a dichotomous key in your lessons, so let's go through it real quick. It's pretty simple. All right, so we're gonna identify bird X. So you always start with the top. All right, the bird beak is, so we're looking at bird X, this one, is relatively long and slender. It is not long and slender, okay? So it's stout and heavy. So now we go to two, all right? The bottom surface of the lower beak is flat and straight, okay? This is not flat and straight. So we go to three. The lower edge of the upper beak has a distinct bend, okay? That does not have a bend, it's mostly flat. So that's your answer. Parts of the brain, you're definitely going to be asked about the parts of the brain, any of them, any of the just the locations. So parietal lobe, okay, parietal is always going to be towards the, um, at the back. So you got the frontal, occipital, um, temporal, parietal right here. And then the entire top part, not this thing down here, the entire top part is the cerebrum. And then this is the cerebellum. Think of it as the bell. So cerebellum. And then of course you have your brain stem. The top of the brain stem is the uh, medulla. Then the little bump is the pons. All right, cell membrane. What is the building block of structure G? Okay, so this one's a little tricky because there's kind of two parts to it. First, you have to identify what G is. So cell membrane, bulk of the cell membrane is your lipids, your phospholipids, these little things here. The other thing that is in the cell membrane are going to be your protein channel. So these are proteins, okay? But protein is an option. The building block of a protein. So proteins are made of amino acids. So that's going to be amino acids. Monosaccharides would be the building block of carbohydrates, which would be D. Um, nucleotide would be the building block of nucleic acids. And then chains of fatty acids would be lipids. All right, this one has to do with energy transfer and why there's less energy the higher you go up. And so we went over the 10% rule, only 10% is transferred, which means 90% is lost. The reason it's lost um, is it's really just due to heat and metabolism. So all the functions the animal does, um, the, all the chemical reactions in the body, it's, uh, that's why. So it's gonna be D. All right, wisdom teeth. All right, we you know wisdom teeth are, they have little or no use. It's what we call a vestigial structure. You know, that's it. There's not much else I can say about that vestigial structure. Um, analogous structures would be two structures that have similar functions, but different structure. Uh, divergent is type of evolution where um, two different er organisms diverge into different species and homologous. So same structure, different function, like the the wings of a bird and the arms of a human, same bones, you know, radius, all that humerus, all that stuff, but different functions. All right. All right. Which would occur. So if you're introducing a possum into an area that is not native to, um, it's likely, and it has no natural predators and abundant food supply, it's not going to become extinct, okay? It's not going to develop a shorter lifespan. Um, it's going to grow to a larger population size and, and could potentially be an invasive species if it starts competing. All right, water entering the atmosphere in plants is called transpiration. So transpiration, it, you know, I always tell you guys, it's just evaporation from plants. So that's the answer. All right, chromosome number. So basically, if you're going from sex cell to body cell, you double it. If you're going from body cell to sex cell, you divide in half. 
that's it. So sperm cell is a sex cell is 14. So in the newly formed zygote, which is going to be a, you know, a body cell, you just double it. So 28. All right, so protists, fungi, plants, animals. So the only one missing are your bacteria. Okay, bacteria are prokaryotic. So that means these four are eukaryotic. Okay, they're not all multicellular because protista, um, and there's a couple of others. There's also exceptions to that. They're not all heterotroph because plants, um, and some protista, and they're not all decomposers, you know, some are. All right, uh, abiotic, really simple abiotic, non-living. Um, so just make sure they're all non-living things. Wind, precipitation, soil type, there you go. Worms are, worms are living, plants are living, um, trees, bacteria, those are living, mushrooms living, or biotic. All right. Um, which kingdom are considered. So ethanogen, thermophile, halophile. Again, terms you might not have heard of. It really doesn't really matter, but you should know harsh environment or extreme environment, which is archaea. So archaea live anywhere. And the reason they can do that is because they're a unique cell wall. All right, so this is a renewable, non-renewable resource type of question. So talking about solar energy and the, basically the negatives of solar or renewable resources. So solar is in really the biggest negative is it's expensive, so the high cost. All right, how do toxins reach the fetus? Okay, so early in the, in the first trimester, it's important, it's, well, I mean, anytime it's important to, you know, for the mother to be careful what they're taking in their body um, as far as food, drink, drugs, anything, because it goes directly in there across the placenta. <clears throat> Ovary makes eggs, matures eggs, um, the blood does not flow directly into the fetus from the mother. It gets filtered in the placenta first. Recombination of genes that's mixing up the DNA. That's, no, that's like the worst answer. All right, what's this process called? So you have one cell, you end up with four cells. It's either mitosis or meiosis. Meiosis makes four cells. My two cis makes two cells. Binary fission is how um, bacteria replicate. Okay, what type of material for genetic information? Okay, carbohydrates would be sugars, fatty acids, lipids, nucleic acids. Um, nucleic acids make up DNA. So DNA is your genetic information. And then, you know, protein. All right, cell transportation, what structure prevents a plant cell from bursting? So, you know, also osmosis, water moves into the cell. Animal cells will burst because they don't have protection, uh, that plant cell cell, plant cells have a cell wall that protects them from bursting. Flow of gases into a plant, okay? Plants take in CO2, they give off oxygen. So carbon dioxide moves in, oxygen moves out. Uh, which of these is an accurate food web? All right, so you need, so your top predator is going to be on the top. Um, all right, so it looks like it's going to be B. The sand eels can eat herring, cod can eat herring, seabirds can eat cod, tuna can eat sand eels. <clears throat> All 
All right. So membrane bound organelles. That's just a fancy way of saying organelles, like a nucleus. Okay. No nucleus. Pro no. There you go. Plant and animals are eukaryotes. So even if you didn't know that, but you knew plant and animals were eukaryotes, it kind of gives away the answer. It's the only one that doesn't belong. All right, so part of the cell cycle where it's preparing. So before the cell divides, before mitosis, before meiosis, um, you have G1, S, and G2. That's called interphase. Cytokinesis is after mitosis when the entire cell splits in half, and then the anaphase, prophase are parts of mitosis. All right, how can these chemicals improve the yield of crop support? So we're talking about biotechnology and basically um, genetic GMOs. So GMOs, you can modify the DNA of an organism and make it so it's, you know, it's better. You take the, the best DNA of it. Um, so basically, which one of these is a positive? So it's releasing natural herbicides. So you don't need to use Okay, so it's basically a biological weed control. So that's kind of the key word in the herbicide. All right, all right, we talked about this before. So especially early in the trimester, most first trimester, almost everything's developing in the fetus. So it's important, especially this time, because um, it can affect any of the essential organs. Deforestation is cutting down trees, trees that normally take in carbon dioxide. So if the trees are not there to absorb the carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide will increase. Okay, and then higher CO2 um, correlates with higher temperatures, global warming, all that. And on top of that, if you're burning the trees, so if you take them down and burning them, if you burn the trees, it also gives off CO2. All right, parts of the flower, um, B, right here. Okay, this is where the pollen is. So all the pollen are on these outer things. Those are the male parts. The middle part is the female part. So that's the anther, the male part that produces the pollen. So this, this is what I'm talking about. So this isn't technically wrong. So the stamen um, is the male structure that produces the pollen. The stamen includes both of these parts. Um, the anther is the part on the top that specifically produces the pollen. So that, that could be a tricky one if you read that real quick and think, oh, that's the answer. Um, you're not wrong, but there's a better answer. So just make sure you read all the options just in case you get a question like that. ATP, as soon as you see ATP, think energy. Okay, I only see energy right here. Energy, boom, that's the answer. This describes a cell. A cell is definitely not the largest living thing. It's the basic unit of living things. That sounds good. It's not non-living. Uh, it's not only found in unicellular, so B. All right, carbohydrates. Both proteins and carbohydrates are complex. Are, are which of the following? Okay. All right, so they're, they're not lipids. Lipids are made up of smaller units themselves. Sequence of sugars would just be carbohydrates. Nucleotides of DNA, that's just nucleic acids. So polymer is a fancy word for a structure made up of smaller subunits, which they tell you, or also known as a monomer. So polymers of a monomer or smaller subunits. All right, determined to different species, the absolute best way, most modern way, always gets the last word, DNA. Uh, paired with the building blocks, so fat is not made of sugar, protein is not made of starches, DNA is made of nucleotides, okay? All right, now cells do contain organelles, so there's another one where you know, if you read it quickly, you might be like, oh, yeah, cells are made of organelles, but it's asking about molecules, not cells. All right, why does sexual reproduction result in greater diversity? Because you have new DNA, 
okay, or new combinations of DNA from sexual reproduction. That's it. All right, so we're talking about using corn and grasses um, to use for energy. So, you know, obviously we can reuse that. So it's renewable resources or reduction of non-renewable resources. Fertilization occurs. So um, pollen's here, a bee comes in or whatever, rubs pollen off on it, goes to another flower. Um, and then this part is sticky. So the stigma is sticky, the pollen will then go down here. Fertilization occurs down here in D, which is the ovary and the eggs. <coughs> All right, so expression of genes. So we're talking about um, protein synthesis. So there's two steps of protein synthesis. Transcription is translation. So DNA to RNA is transcription. RNA to protein translation or D. All right, hardening of arteries affect the blood flow. I always think of like a garden hose. So if you have a garden hose that's normally fluid and then all of a sudden it's, you know, frozen solid, um, that's going to restrict the blood flow. Okay, it's that simple. All right, lactic acid, as soon as you see lactic acid, you should think anaerobic respiration. So, um, so basically your body normally does aerobic respiration to make energy from glucose. Um, but when that runs out, when your oxygen runs out in your muscles, it has to switch to anaerobic and ends up making lactic acid as a byproduct instead of water. So the more you're running, the more likely anaerobic respiration is going to occur, the more lactic acid. So there's higher amounts of lactic acid uh, or without oxygen. So anaerobic. So two of these mentioned anaerobic. So it started with anaerobic, changed to aerobic. No, that's not right. Um, started with anaerobic, but changed to aerobic. Okay, so no, it's either B or C. Started with aerobic, but changed to anaerobic when oxygen levels increased or decreased? Decreased. All right, that's a tricky one because there's a lot of different parts to that. All right, microscope, internal. As soon as you see something about an internal structure, um, it's going to be transmission. So tra scanning would be, so both the electrons are very, very small structures like organelles, like the mitochondria. Um, and then Transmission would be internal, scanning would be like 3D dimensional, external. Compound light would be to use uh, to look at living cells. Um, and then dissecting would be for, you know, non-microscopic objects you wanna view close up. All right, before mitosis begins, what must happen before the cell can divide? Um, well, before the cell divides, you need to replicate the DNA. Okay, so uh, during interphase, there's G1, S, and G2. During S, S stands for synthesis of DNA. So that's what's going to happen. All right, so the amino acid produced when you get the following codon, um, CAG. So if you're asking, if you're trying to figure out the amino acid, given the mRNA, you don't have to trans. You don't have to translate it or anything. You already have the mRNA. So you simply go on this map. The way you read it is from the inside out. Others, it might just tell you all the different ones. So C, A, G would be G, I, N. All right, theory and law. A um, couple things to remember. Theories are explanations. Theories can't become laws. Laws can't become theories. They're both different things. Theories are considered factual. Um, just keep that in mind. So. There's no distinction. Of course, there's a distinction. That's just silly. Laws always use common sense. Okay, so that's not, that's kind of a silly answer. A law tells us what happens. A theory tells us why. There you go. An explanation or why. A theory is not just a guess. Theory is, you know, considered factual. So definitely see. Relationship between cells, DNA, and proteins. So before I even read, I'm just going to tell you. Um, so 
inside of a cell, inside the nucleus of a cell, you have DNA. That DNA um, inside the cell is the directions to basically make proteins. So cells contain DNA, DNA controls the production of proteins. An error, okay, so this is just, you're going from DNA to DNA, A turns to T, T turns to A, or C turns to G, or G turns to C. So T, A, A, T, G, C, those are fine, that's fine, that's fine, G, C, G, C, T, A, G, C, A, T, C, G, C, A, C. Okay, there you go. So there's an error on segment three. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. So segment three is your answer. All right, where proteins are made. Proteins are made in the ribosomes. So ribosomes are the little dots, okay? And those little dots tend to, so these are him, them. It's a little hard to see, but it's on also on the endoplasmic reticulum. There are ribosomes, so number two. And then just so we're here, number one would be the mitochondria. Number four is the nucleus. Number three is the cell membrane. All right, carrying capacity, basically population size. That's it. It's just the maximum population size. So when a population has reached its maximum population size, um, growth and immigration. So immigration, think going inside, is going to equal to death and emigration or exiting. And that, that's it. That's the answer, A. All right, we're talking about endosymbiosis. So endosymbiosis is basically how we got eukaryotic organisms. So you have bacteria, um, prokaryotes, and eventually one would just kind of live inside of another and then slowly start to replicate. So some of them were kind of specialized. Some were to make energy from, you know, make just energy in general. Some are able to photosynthesize. So that's how we get the organelle. Um, this one specifically is talking about mitochondria. So if you know what mitochondria does, mitochondria makes energy for the cell so or ATP. So they're able to make more use of available energy. Okay. Or it could say ATP. Just keep that in mind. All right. More closely related. So just see which ones are the further you go down are closely related. So they're all animals. Okay, these two are mammals, these two are carnivores, and then that's always going to be different. So B and C. All right, so structure X was cut. Okay, this transports sperm. Sperm's created here. If you cut it, okay, sperm can't go out. Okay, sperm would no longer, sperm would still be produced. It just wouldn't be able to be released from the body. produces gametes. So gametes, sperm and egg. So here we're talking about sperm. Sperm is created in A. Um, so the answer has to have A in it. And then a loss for delivery, which would be D. All right, flow of energy. Um, so all energy comes from the sunlight. So sunlight. If sunlight wasn't an option, it would be producers or plants or something like that. All right, human evolution. So really, the big things you need to know is jaw size over time got smaller, um, brain size got bigger. So jaw size became smaller and less protruding over time. And that's it. Um, this one talks about it being changed due to brain size. It, if it doesn't say that anywhere in the question, it's probably not going to be it. Um, there are multiple reasons it changed, but just in general, jaw size smaller, brain size or cranial capacity. So your exam might say cranial capacity too. All right, blood clot is going to um, increase the blood pr pressure. Okay, it's really simple. So we'll increase the blood flow, not the blood flow. Um, change direct, it's not gonna change the direction. Um, we'll not change blood flow alone. We'll not change the blood flow. We'll block blood flow, preventing oxygen from a certain area. Okay, there you go. All right, carbohydrates. Okay, so this is another one students kind of struggle with. Carbohydrates. 
So our carbohydrates are always going to be on a ring. Only one of these is on a ring. And what do I mean by a ring? I mean this. See, it's kind of a circular shape there. Okay, that's a carbohydrate. Um, the other one that's on a ring, the only other one would be nucleic acids are kind of on a ring, but the way to determine nucleic acid, it's going to have a phosphorus. So there would be the letter P in there. So if you see something, you know, circular like this and there's no P, it's a, it's a um, carbohydrate. If there is a phosphorus in there, um, it's a nucleic acid. Okay. And then so this one down here is going to be your protein. And then this one here is your lipids. Lipids are long chains. It might just be one of these. It might be several of them attached together. OK. Um, Punnett square question. So PKU is recessive. So the father has PKU. So you would have two small Ps. On the top of your Punnett square, it does not have PKU, which would be two big P's on the side. So all of the boxes would be big P, little P, which means they would have a 0% 0 0 chance of having PKU. All right, showing embryology, which is the comparison of embryos of different organisms to see how similar they are. Um, So it's asking what's gonna happen as they get older. So they're different organisms. So when they get older and start to develop, they're gonna look different. So they're gonna develop distinct characteristics. All right, relationship between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. And they tell you the answer if you look at the graphic. So photosynthesis at the top, photosynthesis makes or produces glucose and oxygen, which is then the reactant for cellular respiration. And then cellular respiration produces water and carbon dioxide, which is then the reactant for photosynthesis. So um, so A. All right, now they're punnett square question. If they're both heterozygous, so heterozygous would be like big A, little a. So one of the parents would be big A, little a, big A, little a. Um, you're always going to get a three to one ratio when you have both as heterozygous, so three to one, so 75% dominant, 25% recessive. As asking the probability of having straight pinky fingers. And straight is recessive. The allele for bent is dominant. So straight is recessive, so 25%. Which organism will be negatively affected by the decrease in the mouse population? So whatever is eating the mice is going to be negatively affected. So owls, hawks, snakes. So there you go, only one. Meiosis, again, so mitosis is creates two identical body cells. Meiosis creates four genetically different sex cells, okay? B is the only one dealing with reproduction. All right, which step would a mutation? So a mutation is a change in DNA. So only two of these mentioned DNA, DNA is copied. Usually the change or error in DNA is when it's gonna be copied or replicated. So it's gonna be step A is most likely um, when that's gonna occur. Where does the fetus normally develop? Okay, well, that's gonna be the uterus right here. So you have the ovary makes eggs, fallopian tube. Um, that's where fertilization is going to take place after the egg gets released and then it gets moved into the uterus. Um, that's where the fetus grows. Which process to convert energy from food into ATP. Okay, that, that's just cellular respiration. Okay. Which is basically the reverse of photosynthesis. Those kind of go together. Osmosis is the transportation of water. Um, transcription has to do with DNA. So those two are not even close. 
All right, um, homologous structures is showing homologous structures. So these organisms have similar bones, but they're obviously very different functions. It's just a common ancestor. When in doubt, if one of your answers shows is that they show a possible common ancestry, if you don't know the answer, it's probably the answer. All right, uh, PKU. All this fancy stuff about this disorder doesn't really matter. All you need to know is you know whether it's dominant or recessive. So PKU is a recessive trait. Now, when you're looking at a pedigree, um, it's going to tell you if shaded is recessive or unshaded is not. Generally, the shaded ones are recessive. So the only way to have that recessive would be two little p's and unshaded you know if you get a question like this and uh, the only possible thing would be for unshaded to be heterozygous so parents three and four so this would be two little p's on your top and then big p little p on the bottom okay so also keep in mind if they have any kids that have the recessive trait they have to be heterozygous. But for just keeping it simple, just assume all the unshaded ones are heterozygous and the shaded ones are um, recessive. Unless it asks you specifically in your EOC, you know, which one could be homozygous dominant or something. So if it asks you that, you'd have to look at the ones that have kids that do not have any recessive traits. All right, moving on. Um, keyword, catalyze, catalyst, okay, catalyst or enzyme, okay. Um, so it breaks down proteins into these foods to make it easier, which of the following proteins is an enzyme. So an enzyme is a protein. Oh, I've been saying the answer all along, it's right there, enzyme. Primary function of C. Okay, C's pointing to the flower petal and really flower petals come in in all different shapes and colors and sizes and smells. The whole point is to attract animals to pollinate. Not photosynthesis. Some students pick that for some reason. I do not know why. That's the leaf. Okay, leaf. Photosynthesis occurs in the leaves. All right, so a lot of the students get tripped up on this type of question because there's dyes are like, we never learned about the dyes. What do the dyes do? It doesn't matter. It tells you right next to it. So if you want to determine if something's a prokaryote or eukaryote, prokaryote, pro, no, they do not have a nucleus. So whatever one stains the nucleus. So that's your answer right there. All right, to see which ones are more closely related, see which species have the most DNA um, similar to each other. Okay, so the unknown species, uh, let's just take a quick look right here. So this one, see the only difference is the last letter. One has a C, one has a G, the rest are the same. So they're most similar. Asexual reproduction. Um, so sexual reproduction, you have two parents that make genetically different offspring. So asexual is the opposite. You have one parent that makes identical offspring. So one parent, identical offspring, row A. All right, population of cockroaches was sprayed with an insecticide, some of them survived. Okay, so this could be true about this. It could be true about bacteria and antibiotics. It could be true about, um, you know, um, some sort of insects eating the crops, you spray them, okay, regardless. So this is natural selection. So organisms don't all of a sudden just become immune to something because they've been in contact with it. There are gonna always be some individuals that have a natural trait, a natural variation that allows them to survive. And of course, they're gonna pass that trait on. If they survive, they're gonna pass that trait on. The others are gonna have that trait, so D. Presence of oxygen. So oxygen, you should think immediately aerobic respiration and 20 times as much as glycolysis alone. So, well, there you go. Uh, fermentation is the same thing as anaerobic respiration. 
So lactic acid, the only difference is one produces lactic acid, the other one produces alcohol. And then photosynthesis has not an answer for that one. All right, part of the brain again, cerebellum. Okay, remember cerebell, the bell of the brain, which is down here, so A. Okay, cerebrum is the top part, frontal lobe, parietal, um, occipital, and then temporal, your brainstem, the pons is the bump here, um, and then the medulla. All right, natural selection most likely to occur. So again, natural selection, you have a population of organisms, there's a changing environment, individuals with the beneficial adaptation or beneficial traits are gonna survive and reproduce more than the ones that do not have that trait. So you would need genetic variation. Um, harsh environmental conditions, okay, that's a possibility. Uh, no reproductive isolation barriers exist. That's where you got plenty of food. So if it's plenty of food, there's there's no competition. So competition, survival of the fittest ultimately. So that's going to be B. All right, bottom of the sea floor. There's not much sunlight. So because there's not much sunlight, okay, there's little producers that rely on uh, photosynthesis. Co-dominant. So co means together, dominant, dominant traits. So these are two dominant traits that can both be expressed. Okay. So for example, um, so colorblind, we said was a uh, sex link trait. Um, that's just polygenic inheritance. Well, so, okay, there we go. So white rabbit and black rabbit can produce a black and white rabbit. So white fur could be dominant, black fur could be dominant, meaning their offspring could be white and black fur. Photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast. Right, that one's pretty simple. Um, nucleus stores DNA, genetic information. Mitochondria makes energy. Endoplasmic reticulum. Um, that's around the nucleus. Used for transportation. It contains ribosomes as well, so that makes proteins. All right. This is also talking about natural selection, survival of the fittest. Um, same idea. You spray with it, spray the insects. Most of them die out. Some of them survive. They reproduce. Um, and those ones with the beneficial traits survive and continue to do well. So they didn't all have the mutation. Some had the genetic mutation that made them resistant. Mutations. So mutations are good. They can be good. They can be bad. They can be, they can have no effect. Okay. They can be random. They can be caused by mutagens. Okay. So um, I just said they can be random. So it's not going to be A. They can only be caused by events of mitosis. They generally occur when the DNA is replicating. They result in genetic sequence, in different genetic sequences. So there you go. Enzymes speed up reactions, um, help break down, you know, your different biomolecules, and they function under each enzyme has a specific set of conditions they function under. So this particular enzyme functions the best at a pH of 6.6, .6, but if you change it, it'll slowly degrade it and eventually it won't work at all. Some, it might be a certain temperature that they function in or don't function in. <laughs> so regardless, the, um, so the optimum pH of this particular enzyme is 6.6. .6. So that means it's going to occur fastest. If you increase the pH, it will slowly uh, be less efficient. And then if you do too much, it'll eventually just break down and not work at all. All right, cool. That's everything. Um, I went through those questions really quick. I know if you have any specific questions, um, let me know. Otherwise, good luck on your EOC and have a good day.